Uh, Alabama's, let me just start off by saying Alabama's a really good team, yeah. you know, and, and we're good. And, uh, you, uh, you know, this this league, as you guys know, is a 10-round fight. It's 10 weekends. It's, it's, it's hard on the road. It's so hard on the road to win. Um, and, uh, you know, it was good to get back home. And when you're at home, you've got to try to take care of business no matter who you're playing. And, and, and you know, I, I, I told our guys last week after that, you know, I came back. I said, hey, we're going to come back to work on Monday. We got back. We practiced Monday. We played a really good Walford team. And, and everybody was trying to get us to jump ahead and look at Alabama. And I'm like, no, we, we got a really good Walford team coming in. We got to focus on them. If we get better today focusing on Walford, then, then, you know, and then we get better on Thursday when we practice and cut. Things will start to take care of themselves, and, and and that's what they did today. How and, big is this, though, Wes? I mean, you get swept in open to come back and answer like this for these young guys to hear your message and see the validity of that consistency message. Yeah, you know, it, it's big. You know, the challenge is, is you got to stay hungry in this league. If you if you think you're full or satisfied, that's when you're gonna you're gonna go in and you're gonna get swept again. And and so, uh, you know, the challenge for us is is continue to stay hungry, continue to understand that every single day. You've got to get better. The hay's never in the barn. It, you know, I mean, it just never is. Hey, well, I'd say that. It's in the barn when you make the last out of, of your last game. You can say, all right, let's rack it up in the barn and, and, and go take the summer off. And I know we've talked a lot, uh, too, about the older guys on the team, but Paul Tate was saying some of those older guys kind of lit a fire under some of their teammates this week. Kind of what did you see from that standpoint? Yeah, you know, it was good. I mean, you know, we, when you when you kind of have that player-only meeting and, and we're not around and, and, and they're in there and they're rallying the troops, so to speak, uh, and getting after them, uh, that's what it takes to be successful is if you got to have older players who know what this league's about. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, you go around our, our diamond and, and there's not very, you know, you got Charlie, obviously, but Kobe, Sebastian, Sebastian was huge yesterday. You know, he, he's a guy when you look up uh, just his toughness and, his, and, and him understanding this league and drew a couple big walks to get Charlie and Corey back up there late. I mean, those those kind of things are huge, and that's what a veteran older player does. When did the meeting take place? Was it early before the Wofford game, or was it after? So, uh, there was one before and after. Oh, okay. We'll leave it at that. Leave it at that. You guys manufactured runs today, too, something we have not really seen a, a Georgia team do. The six stolen bases, uh, obviously you saw something there, but what about that aspect of it? Yeah, no, I mean, you know, we work on it all the time, guys, and, and sometimes it's hard. You know, you, you're hitting the ball out of the yard. You don't want to run. And, <laughs> well, no, I mean, yeah, I'm not yeah. trying to be – I know. Yeah, you just – it's – you know, it's like, man, if I run out of this, this inning – Ah, you know, I mean, then we, we, but today, you know, we just, we felt like we needed to try to push the gas pedal and we did. Mm -hmm. Christian Maracna did a really good job, you know, out of some first and third, one out situation, first and second. Kind of, you know, tired, I get. We got tired a little bit in the, in the fourth, but overall, he pitched pretty well. Yeah, yeah. Another guy, you know, we just, you know, our pitching all in all, I mean, I probably left a little between Roberge and Mm -hmm. Fatty sack and then working back tomorrow. Probably left all of them in a little too long, but I'm trying to stretch them. I'm trying to get them out there longer so I can expand the roles. Mm -hmm. And you know, probably like I say, left them left them in there a tick too long. But that's part of this growth process you got to have with that staff. So you know, if you peel back and look at some things they did, I'm very happy with it. You know, the end of the uh, that uh, end result with that you know box score line, you're probably not as happy. But for me, all in all, I mean, where we were they're starting to get there. I know you said why you put Corey Collins in the in the leadoff row, but why why him? Why did you pick him to, to beat that guy? Phenomenal plate discipline, right? Mm -hmm. So when you got a guy hitting in front of Charlie Condon, and, and, and then what happens and what you guys are seeing is, is look at what's something we call count leverage. And, and, you know, they're trying to attack Corey to get him to chase. He's not. He's getting into some fastball counts. And then it's like, okay, am I going to walk this guy and have a guy on for Charlie, or am I going to go after him? And, 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 you know, Corey's forcing them to go after him, and he's getting off good swings. Mm. Big picture, Corey said that first phone call you had with him, when I asked him about when did he settle in and when, when did he really get your message, he said the first call. What, what was that first call like, and how important was that call with him? Yeah, 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 I mean, with all our guys, you know, my, my biggest thing, and, you know, you can ask our player, I mean, my, my number one rule, I don't get too upset unless you're not believing in yourself. Uh, and, you know, I won't believe, uh, you know, results are different. I, I evaluate 0 for 4s or pitching performance is different than, than you know, what, what most people do. And, you know, if, if a guy's on time, if a guy's doing some things right and maybe he's not getting some results, uh, that doesn't mean I'm going to hit the panic button on him. 
And, you know, I think Corey liked to hear that. And then, you know, just talking about the way we do things. We, we, we coach off the positive and, and, you know, I don't beat guys up when they strike out or, I mean, strikeouts are going to happen. Uh, walks are going to happen, but how did they happen? And I think that, that those were the things that Corey, you know, for him liked to hear. What Brian is Zeldin, you know, obviously gets a win on, on yesterday in the game one. Other than, uh, what, what kind of made you feel confident enough for throwing back out there again today, uh, pitching twice in a series, especially in a, a big-time spot? Yeah, well, we, we have a very extensive uh, sports science and uh, I don't want to give all this away. Uh, we have a very extensive sports science led by our strength coach, Coach Derek Groomer, who uh, was able to come to me today. And first of all, Coach Groomer told me he was fine from a health standpoint. And then Brian came up to me and said, hey, I got six outs in me. You put me in the game. I, I want to pitch. And, and I said, well, I I'm going to try not to, but all right, I I'll keep that in mind. And, and 